Hey everyone, it's Smite Pants Chess here. Hope you're doing well and staying indoors away from this terrible virus. But here today I'm with you and we're gonna go look at a Stockfish 8 game against Alpha Zero. In this game, Alpha Zero is playing with the black pieces and we're getting to another Berlin. But I just wanna show you how Alpha Zero wins in this game. Uh, because I think it's a good example of how we can win if we all decided to play the Berlin against White. It's a very solid opening. And it's very tricky for white to play against. And I highly recommend it. So in the game, Stockfish was playing e4. Alpha Zero plays e5. And after knight to f3, knight c6, bishop b5. We're getting to the Berlin with knight to f6. Stockfish castles. Alpha Zero takes. Then there's d4. Knight d6, attacking the bishop. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes bishop. D takes e5. And then knight to f5. A trade of queens. And we're into the Berlin endgame. And typically, now white plays knight c3, as we saw in the last game, which was a draw between the two engines. But here, Stockfish played rook d1 with check. And Alpha Zero played the main move, which is king to e8. And after knight c3, now here, typically Alpha Zero goes in for this line with bishop to e7, which we saw in the last game. And for instance, after knight to e4, black's idea is to try and trade this knight off on f3. Takes, takes, bishop b3, b6. The point is now black has got a very solid structure and has basically already equalized out of the opening. And this is why most people play the Berlin, just to equalize out of the opening and stop white gaining any advantage. So you can definitely do this too. And this is why top grandmasters play this opening and why Kramnik stopped Kasparov in that famous world championship match. So here though, Alfser actually played differently. He played knights e7. Going to reroute their knight to g6, maybe hit this e5 pawn with some interest in play. White played knight to d4, and now knight g6, hitting this pawn, and now h3. This looks like a trap for white, but actually black can easily capture this pawn if they wish. Knight takes e5. If Stockfish played rook e1, we can play f6. And if white decides to play the move f4, thinking they're going to win a piece, black has the tactics in their favour with bishop c5 pinning that knight on d4. And now white doesn't really win any material because even if, let's say, f takes e5, bishop takes d4 comes with check, so we can't play this. If the king moves off to the diagonal, king h1, bishop takes d4, just wins a piece or a pawn for black anyway, because then white will take and then bishop takes. And even after bishop f4, black's pretty much equalized in this opening. So after f4, bishop c5 as well, Bishop e3 doesn't work either because then just comes knight to c4 with good play for white and there's nothing really that white can do to get an edge here even if like bishop f2 with a discovered check the king just hides on f7 and black's absolutely fine here after f4 bishop c5 uh, rook d e4 looks quite interesting as well but then just comes bishop f5 and this knight is still pinned and this bishop now attacks the rook and again white gains no advantage so after f6, bishop f4 can be played instead. But then it just comes bishop d6, takes, takes, knight to f3, bishop f5, white wins the pawn back, and the king just goes to f8. However, the point now is that black actually has the two bishops, which could be very important in the end game. And you have to say black has definitely equalised out the opening. Okay, after h3 though, Alpha Zero didn't take the pawn off. He played bishop d7 instead, developing a piece. f4 supports the e5 pawn. Alpha Zero now plays h5. An important move stops white from playing g4 ideas. Stockfish develops with bishop to e3. Knight h4. And interestingly here, black's actually moved the knight quite a lot now. Uh, it moved from f5 to e7 to g6 to h4, when it could have gone from f5 to h4 straight away. So this is rather interesting. Maybe they could have moved to h4 with this bishop e7 idea, uh, because we'll get a similar setup very soon. So rook d2 by Stockfish. Knight to f5, so basically the knight's just gone all the way back, attacking that bishop. King f2, bishop b4 to pin the knight on c3. Rook to d1, doubling rooks, and Alpha Zero now gives the first weakness to white. Bishop takes c3, doubling the pawns. B takes c3. Interestingly, Stockfish 10 actually gives rook h6 as a good move here for black. But maybe after c4, black could get into some difficulties after they play b6, because then could come c5. And if knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, b5. It's not so easy. It's probably going to be quite drawish now with opposite coloured bishops. 
for instance c3, bishop e6, and the position looks day equal. Now if you're playing this as black though, and you're playing a stronger player who's playing white, you'd be happy with this position. So certainly the Berlin is for you if you want to try and defeat higher rated opponents when you're playing black. So going back to the game, Alf Zero actually took the knight off on d4. I'm gonna get into an opposite bishop coloured endgame with bishop e6, hitting that pawn, a4, g6. And now white's got the all the dark squares covered and black's got all the white squares covered. Uh, after a5, there's b6, rook d3, king d7, and then rook swings across with black playing h4. Stopping any g4 ideas again and covering this g3 square. This is a typical idea here, just to limit white from playing g4. Stockfish continue with the king g1, rook a c8, rook c1, bishop c4, and then c3, king e6, and rook d1. So no doubt about it, this position is dead equal. Play continued on with a few other uh, minor moves. And eventually, Alphacy managed to get this b5 move in, which could become quite important, because it offers now the chance to play b4 at some point and break open the position. So white stops this, the rook goes into the center, it's a few more little sideways moves that both sides play. Rook f5, bishop e3, bishop e4 hits the rook. Rook moves to d1, and we get rook b8 once again. So then comes bishop d2, which looks like it scuppers this plan of playing b4. So bishop d5, king g1, bishop c4. And as soon as now Stockfish played bishop e3, Alf Zero took its chance with b4, opening up the position, and all of a sudden it swings in black's favour. So after takes, rook takes, rook c1 attacking the bishop, bishop d5. Black's pretty much consolidated their position. And this c6 pawn is very strong because it's supported by this strong bishop on d5. And now all of a sudden this a5 pawn could become very weak. And so when his white bishop is quite weak because it's behind these two pawns. And it's always going to have this job of protecting them. Whereas black's bishop is actually out in the open, threatening this pawn on g2. Maybe he could play rook b2 at some point and threaten this pawn on g2. So, yeah, black has a clear edge here now in this position. So play continued, rook b1, trying to trade rooks. And Alf Zero plays rook to b5, attacking the pawn. The bishop protects it. And then comes king to d7. King to f2, getting their king up into the action. And now bishop to a2, attacking the rook, forcing the trade. And then c takes b5. Note that a takes b5 absolutely loses here for black, because then just comes a6. Even if black plays and moves like rook h5 here, then a7 just wins, because then rook h8. And there's rook a1 at the end of it, attacking the bishop, and also the rooks behind this pawn now. So alpha 0 took with the c pawn. Rook g1 was played. Bishop d5 and then king to e3 and rook h5. So okay, it looks still very even because basically they've got opposite, opposite colored bishops in a rook and pawn endgame. However, one of black's pawns is completely past here, so the b5 pawn could be pushed up the board um, quite easily. There's also maybe the break of c5 coming for black as well. So certainly there is chances here, and as we'll see, play continued on, bishop b4, rook h8, king f2 and then rook g8. And basically, black just starts getting the king up into a better position. So alpha zero solidifies with c6, bishop d6, rook c8, king d2, rook e8. Um, and white plays g4 with check, uh, there's a trade. And then king takes f4 can be played. So why does stockfish go in for this instead? Well, it's quite precarious now because they can't really protect uh, this f4 pawn. If the rook moves to rook f1, then bishop takes g2. It's just really good for black. So as soon as we get into this position, white's really struggling here. So g4 is played. There's a trade. King takes f4. Rook g4 check. King f3. Bishop c5. And now g5. So why is this good? Well, black just offers a free pawn with rook takes g5, but then now rook h6. So they're going to try and win the h3 pawn, and the bishop does a great job of protecting all these pawns on white squares for black. Rook g1 is played, rook takes h3, rook e1, and then there's a discovered check with king f4, king d2, bishop c4. And again, after a few moves by black and white, eventually 
Black starts moving up the board with the king. King f4 comes. Rook d1. And now bishop d5 again. Check. King to d2. And then rook to f3. So now black's got good control of this third rank. Stop quitting the king off for white. And now black may be able to infiltrate with king to e4 at some point. Rook e1 is played to stop this. Bishop e6 again. King c2. And basically this is a typical computer endgame. So both sides are just feeling each other out for ages. You never see a human game like this. But uh, these are supposedly precise variations. And now Alcio sets up another discovered attack. King goes to d2. But finally, after some triangulation and coordination, Alcio gets his king e4 in. Bishop c5. And now the point is after bishop e6, rook e1 check, the king can hide on d5. Um, after a few more moves, we see again, f5 comes from alpha 0. A brilliant move. If on pass on, then king takes d6 will be played. So after f5, stockfish goes rook c5 check. And this allows king takes d4. e6 will discover attack on the rook for stockfish. However, check rook g2. The king's forced back onto the first rank. And now just f4. Because after e7, um, Alpha just plays bishop d7, protects the c6 pawn, and stops the progression of this pawn in the e file. The rook goes to f5. Obviously, if rook bishop takes f5 here, then white will get a queen, so we can't play that. Instead, they just go rook e2 from alpha 0. Rook takes f4 check. King d5 attacking the bishop. Rook f6 to protect the bishop. And now rook e4. And here, weirdly, Stockfish has played bishop f4, giving up the e-pawn. I had a look at king d1 here, but I think alpha 0 just play rook e6. Takes, takes. Bishop b4, king d5. Eventually get c5 in and play b4. And this is a, a clearly one end game for black now. Because the king can just swing in and take this pawn at leisure. So really game bishop f4 was played. Rook takes e7. Bishop g5. And now rook e5. Attacking the bishop which retreats to d2. Bishop e6. Uh, rook f8. King c4 with a check. The king goes up to b3. There's another check. King a4. But now comes another check. And bishop c4 is on the menu. And after bishop c3, rook h5, uh, white's actually going to lose the game. Black's in a dominant position. If uh, white continues to protect their pawn on a5, then I think black just plays king a3. And if bishop c3 again, we can play rook d5. Let's say, let's say white keeps on doing this, then eventually just c5 comes, followed by b4 perhaps. For instance, bishop c3 again. Bishop b3, threatening mate with the rook and bishop. Bishop d2, then just c4. And if we go back again, rook d1's checkmate. So white's in quite a difficult position. Let's say rook f2 now, then just comes c3. And again, black's still threatening mate here. And yeah, white's just in a lost position. So stockfish just played bishop g7 instead, allowing black to take this a5 pawn. And now it's pretty much game over. After a few more moves, black just marches their pawns up the board. And it's no issue for Alpha Zero. And here actually Stockfish resign the game. Three pawns down. Uh, with black going to push these up and just win the game with ease. Now that was a quick analysis. I didn't want to go through the game in depth because it was 114 moves long. It's just far too long. However, what I wanted to get out of this game was basically to show you the power of this Berlin opening. And how well black equalises in the game and how there are opportunities for you to win if you play it. Now this was a long drawn out game between two powerful engines. But it just goes to show that black has some great chances even if it's opposite coloured bishops. And opposite coloured bishops doesn't necessarily mean it's a drawn game. So always try and look out for the ideas that Alpha, like Alpha Zero did in this game. Anyway I hope you enjoyed my quick analysis. Sorry it's not been more in depth. But hopefully I'll look at some more games very soon. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed it. Stay safe at home and I'll see you next time.